From injury, Cleveland State last year moving on to the NCAA tournament without last year's Horizon League Player of the Year. And Destiny Leo, she is out with a season-ending injury, and we're underway here in the Iowa capital. Caitlin Clark quickly getting a look and knocking down the first three she sees. Cleveland State plays zone the entire time. Nice job by Clark finding the gap, staying patient in the shot. Colby Maples trying to pick up the slack without Destiny Leo. Misses her first look. And it will stay biking ball. The most important thing in his zone, find the gaps, find the open spots. Caitlin Clark, no one in sight. Boom, baby. Cleveland State, 9-1 and one this season. Have won nine straight, including four straight without Leo. Their leading scorers, Maples, tries to go to work in the paint. And an easy two to finish, Carmen Villalobo. Getting potentially a neutral site win is certainly going to help them. But also to have other people within the state be able to see this squad. Gabby Marshall, no good from three. Goodman puts it back up and she'll be shooting two. She is as good as gold when it comes to finishing. And Jan Jensen, the longtime assistant for the Hawkeyes, works with those post players. She's really trying to push them, getting those early touches, and Goodman finding them herself, working the offensive glass. Now 10 to shoot, and Maples, the transfer from Grambling State, is going to reset, calling her a oh, number. She looked like Caitlin Clark there, going from right to left, a little step back. Oh, my goodness. This is a team coming in with a whole lot of confidence. Nine straight wins. Clark finds herself open and her second three tonight. Maples downhill speed gets to the rim but can't quite kiss it off glass. Hey Barton getting her first touch. Goes all the way into the paint and she draws the foul. Aesthetically a pleasing offense they have, but they're a team, Megan, that is shooting. They're not looking for those mid-range opportunities. They can get going in transition. That's where Caitlin Clark is a maestro when she can thread the needle to her teammates down the lane. Clark recovering from that backdoor cut and a good work inside. Sara Guerrero able to put it away. Oh. Like threading the needle is Clark. Improvement this season, 15 of 20. After shooting 46% last year. Of her game two, they want her to be a post that can take contact and convert at the chair. Maples rejecting the screen. Great take and finish. Such a tough guard is a falter. She starts this fast break and Kate Martin cannot finish it. Staying here though with Stolke. And Clark ready to call that one nearly down the floor as Iowa keeps working the glass. Here is Marshall still not there. Maples, the spin, that's a tough angle. She can't get it to go. And then a foul called on Brooklyn Fort Davis. A strong start for the Vikings. Rivalry showdown. It's the Bragg and Wright's rivalry. Looking for two in a row is the Illini. Coverage begins at... It's like the best rivalry game I've ever heard of. The Bragg and Wright's rivalry. Keep it simple. There's a lot to choose from, but that's up there. I mean, it literally defines what a battle game is, what a rivalry game is. She's going to open up even more in the perimeter for Cleveland State to have time. It'll be interesting to see how much free throws remain in this unreal number. They're 15th in the nation, the percentage of points they get. They go into the post and the block. Clark weaving her way through, leaves it short, one and done for the Hawkeyes. Purdue sees her chance and is stopped. Clark perfectly in rhythm. She's got it. Nine points for Clark on three threes as Purdue attacks at the rim. Layup not there. Beautiful fast break opportunity to the ball. Cleveland State trying to stay within striking distance after a very good start. I was in a nice job defensively staying down, making tough shot attempts happen for the Vikings. 
Iowa also adjusting to this zone by Cleveland State, something they don't see very much of in this season. Here's Molly Davis getting into the paint. Post going to work against Goodman off target and snaring the board as Goodman. Foul called as Maples was trying to break up that pass. Just has no fear when she's on the court. Talking to Coach Bluter today and plays like that. We need a uh, timer. She is diving constantly for these balls. She sacrifices her body the whole entire game. Plus 38 on the floor in their win against Wisconsin. Here's Purdue. She has not found herself open. Talk about logo threesome. Clark, Purdue, shooting it with so much confidence. Shoulder square to the basket on the catch. Beautiful look. Clark inside to Goodman. That's the connect. Purdue, long two. She's got it. That is a nice looking stroke. She's two for two. Iowa cannot give Purdue any sort of room. She is so confident, does not need a lot of space to get that shot off. Goodman, a Sonano looking. A lot of momentum into the front court, and it leads to an easy two for Sara Guerrero. Great seal by Goodman, but it was knocked away. Even better positioning by Fort Davis, and that is the end of the first quarter. Credit Cleveland State's experience in the zone, making it a tough look for Clark when she's off balance. They look confident in what they're doing as a defensive unit, despite so many new players, multiple transfers for this Vikings group, a team that last year won its postseason tournament, advanced to the NCAA tournament, and won a game in the first four. 10 on the clock for Maples, who had a strong start, will kick it out. Villalobos misses everything, but will stay here. 4.6 on the shot clock. Maples takes a look, grinds her way in. And Cleveland State's missed. Clark guarded by Purdue surveying this zone. Clark can't get free, but she will the second time. She's fouled hard. The block was gone up. A lot of contact there. Yeah, and hit her in the face as well. Foul going on Fort Davis. That was a heads up play by Clark. Time ticking down for that give and go to make something happen. Third game back for Stolke after a lower leg injury caused her to miss three games. Feeling like in that Wisconsin game really got that explosiveness back as Purdue, a ridiculous. Caitlin Clark wants to put an end to that good feeling. That rims out. Purdue jets on full speed, leaves it for Villalobos, trying to find her stroke, and she drains it. Uh, by Purdue getting into the paint, having the defense collapse, open three opportunity. It's a five-point game. Iowa's led by as many as 11. Stolke, good position, backing down her defender. She's got the power. Deep positioning early in the possession. She becomes a very tough person to stop. Offensive foul. To come on this kind of stage and have this performance right now. Vikings are taking it to Iowa right now. Marshall's been quiet today. She sneaks along the baseline. They got to get it back inside to Stolke. Martin turning around, not there. Stolke beats two green jerseys for the offensive. Jadiah Thomas trying to get the step. Stolke able to corral it. Molly Davis to pump fake and drive, dishing it off to Martin, and she is wrapped up. He plays like a guard in the sense of her athleticism. This is a player who can board like Nas Hillman, who can jump like Nas Hillman. All-American, Big Ten Player of the Year, but you can see in those moments those similarities. Clark walking it up. Stolke wants it again inside, and there's the speed at work. Cleveland State cannot guard Stolke one-on-one -on -one right now. Maples giving room. Can't make the Hawkeyes pay. Davis penetrating and the floater not there. Stolke going to the free throw line. You ever see Groundhog's Day? Oh, yes. A classic. Live coverage begins at 8 Eastern only on the Big Ten Network and 
the Fox Sports app. It's a really nice pass by Marsha, though. Got right to the top of Martin's hands. Purdue, she wants it from three, and she's got it. My goodness, if she catches it with her feet set, that ball's going in every time. That's a player who led all of Division II last year, 110 threes on the season. Davis, Iowa extending its lead to 14. Davis stepping in the passing lane, and she's got the pick six. How good of a summer she had, her leadership, how steady she has been, and she wants Molly Davis to be more aggressive, getting to the basket just like that. The Alobo snucks down the three. They're not a reach in this game yet. They just keep hitting shots. Iowa has to be locked in defensively to try to put this team away. But Cleveland State, they play so physical, and they're not scared of this type of environment. Still playing with a ton of confidence. Martin almost loses it along the baseline. Marshall, nice little mid-range two. The Alobo, a little hesitation. She is blocked by Goodman. And it's back to the Hawkeyes, and a blocking foul on this side. Martin, this is a team that on the fly when Destiny Leo went down for the season had to completely reshape their identities of this season and making sure able to kick it out under 10 to shoot for the Vikings. The Rairo throws it up and tracking it down a falter. She is a magnet to the ball off the rim. And she does everything, all the little things. She practically drives the bus to the arena at this point, right? <laughs> Clark, nice move inside that hesitation and quickly puts it up and in. Clark's ability to play off the ball is how she's going to continue to build her game. She's excellent at creating the ball in her hand, but when she can play off the ball as well and come off the screens, it just adds another level of scoring. The native of Portugal, Guerrero. Clark in transition, yes! And she throws it up for the crowd as well. You just, you can't guard it. This was a five point difference just a couple minutes ago, and now we've got this. So, and she like slips too, like she kind of slipped afterwards, you can't see it there, but her feet kind of came out from under her. Oh, fell backwards. I mean, she's Diana Taurasi. She's Steph Curry. She's insert great shooter. It's unbelievable. Only so far you can shoot it below the. That's break. true. This is true. She's just trying to hit that uh, sideline logo. <laughs> can't <laughs> falter. Run. Can't falter for that. Purdue working around a screen drains it. I would like to see a shootout between Purdue and Clark from the logo. I mean, we'd be here all night. These two are draining them right now. Iowa turnover. And numbers for Cleveland State. Purdue, five straight points for the Vikings. Clark, the other logo. That's left short. And putting it away. Hannah Stolke. That 11 second differential. Purdue misfires from the long two. Shot clock off for Clark. McCabe lethal from long range. And that will be the end of the first half. They're moving the ball quickly. That's forcing the zone to shift, and they're able to get the ball inside down low in high percentage areas, and they're absorbing that contact from Cleveland State. Cleveland State staying with that zone, a part of their identity. Jordana Reisma in the middle, only played seven minutes in the first half due to foul trouble as Iowa goes deep into the clock, and Marshall misfires from three. That's a good job by Iowa. Those corners in the Vikings' defense is open, are open. That's the right grammar. You got it that time. Yeah. Iowa did a better job of containing her and making her shoot tough. I'm sure there was a big point of emphasis in the locker room with Coach Kilsmeyer getting to the free throw line they do on their very first possession, and Maples hits them both. When you see Clark getting picked up full court. Drawing a lot of attention before she is going to reset up this offense. 
And you see her in a box and one now on Clark. The give and go. Goodman to Martin. It's really dangerous. It's not necessarily when Caitlin Clark has 40 points a game. It's when Clark has 20 scoring for multiple players on the floor. That's when Iowa becomes a really difficult team to beat. A look of incredulity from Caitlin Clark. What kind of word was that? <laughs> she was incredulous at the call. That's an elite word, Sloan Martin. Thank you for the praise. It's Molly Davis for three, rattles it in. We cannot forget the Mac version of Molly Davis, one of the best scorers in that conference. Beautiful take. Cleveland State was charged up in the first half, bringing intensity here as Clark working her way in the post. When she translates to the next level, yes, she can score with her hand, she can create for herself, but can she also come off and create from her teammate? Maples goes into the chest. History a point away from tying her former AAU team games this season. Marshall, no good from three. Stonky on the glass again, and the finish by Mark. There for the O board every time. Stripped away by Clark. Gets a piece and sparks the fast break, which finishes with a Marshall easy two. Three players who have played a whole lot of games together, a whole lot of times on the fast break. Hard foul by Clark. More of Mike Hall leading the way. And although it is firmly basketball season, Megan, I am also excited to hear more of Nebraska ah, in the how volleyball national has that been? championship game. Our Emily Eamon down there covering it, killing it. Beautiful basketball that Maples makes her move, falling away. Look at the shot high on her pocket. It's a nice finish on the fadeaway. Clark, quick trigger. Maples cannot silence this crowd. Leaking out ahead is Martin. The fact that Clark is that close to breaking this record, I'm glad someone did the math, because I was wondering how many games it would take. <laughs> but I'm not a math person, so glad to see someone. The math is mathing. Looking to add more. 23 points to it. Darting down the floor is Maples, and she draws a foul. 20 to 11. The advantage, rebounds, paint points, bench points as well, everything. Yerbach turns it over. 25 points a game. They have led for about 93% of total minutes. And just racking that up here against the Vikings is Purdue. Clark whips it to the high post. Great ball oh. movement. That's Marshall for three. It doesn't go down. And a falter. That was a great pass by Sydney of Falter, though, getting it right to the shooting pocket. It doesn't compare to last year when the first 24 games of the season she was at 25%. And her teammates had to constantly tell her, just keep shooting. Don't put your head down because she can make plays like that. But a turnover. And she was grimacing quite a bit. I'm grimacing from here. 39%. You see those free throw numbers. Just outrageous. 22 of 24. Well, I was doing a good job attacking the basket. They're staying so aggressive that they're getting fouled. Maples forces her way in. Cleveland State has not been able to finish inside. Clark, transition three. Yes. Molly Davis stepping into the passing lane. Another chance for Iowa. Clark wants it. And a jump ball. So when you're Caitlin Clark, you can shoot it whenever you want. Look at this shot. It's automatic. I mean, she steps into it. One, two, shoulder squared, feet set. She's having a ball out there right now. And you know who loves it? None other than Mr. Clark. Although he wasn't smiling there, but he was clapping. <laughs> Brilliant dish. McCabe down low into Stolke. I'm convinced that Clark just wants this place rapturous. You pointed out they have been waiting to just blow the roof off. You just feel like it's going to happen. Oh, there's Dad. 
And how special for Clark too. Her parents go to almost every single game. She's only two hours away in Iowa City at college. It's a real homecoming game for her though. Three point play. And now she's just toying with everybody. I love that she chose to take off from where she did because had she kept going, it gave the defense an opportunity to set up for a charge. That's where Kaitlyn Clark's IQ comes out on display. It's so difficult to predict when she's going to pull up. Her junior year in the quarterfinals. Oh, that's a charge. And Sulky gets it done. Set on the clock for Fierbach. Fierbach has to do something with it. Finds Davis instead. The floater just grazing front iron. And Goodman cleans up the glass. It has been dominant rebounding for the Hawkeyes. And Jan Jensen, her post coach on the bench, just had the biggest smile and fist bump after that because Goodman stayed with the play. Rebounds 43 to 15 in favor of the number four Hawkeyes. Maples the step back. Oh, Incredibly oh. difficult shot. Davis almost counters back, but we head to the four. Even attendance records in some of these places away from Carver Hawkeye Arena. It is just remarkable. The crowds they attract everywhere they go. Even warm-ups, you will see dozens of phones out to record Caitlin Clark in this scene just warming up. You have to credit Clark in the way she's handled all of this. As you see the bucket go in there. To her foundation, you think about the work she's also done with the Coralville Food Pantry as well, as Marshall still can't get that three to fall. But it's great to see that she mixes in that philanthropy with her outside efforts. Purdue drains the three. Four players score this entire game. It's crazy. Four different players, and all four have double figures. A Purdue's type of player, oh my goodness. Clark, and she's over 30. I was going to say, Purdue's done a great job when she gets the ball from three, knocking it down, but uh, Caitlin Clark does that as well. An efficient night for Clark, 42 points, 19, 11 of 19, as she forces her way up the court. I think she said she's pulling on my jersey. I mean, this is just a broken play, and then that's the signature Clark step out. She loves going right to left on the step. That shot is so automatic. It's like a post player doing the mic and drill, shooting layups. Caitlin Clark going right to left from three, from about 30 feet. It's like a layup for her. Almost like a mic and Essentially. They're going to invent drills called Clarks, and you just shoot 30 first back and back. <laughs> Okay, Martin can't finish inside, gets it right back. Marshall gonna slow it down for this Hawkeye offense that has been rolling all night long. 87 points, and Clark will add more. Another Hawkeye steal, and Clark whipping it to Martin, and one. Well, Caitlin Clark continues to add a lot of different numbers to a lot of different stat categories, starting with the points. I mean, you have to literally be right in her face at all times. She needs no space, and then the pass, threading the needle perfectly to Kate Martin down the floor. Martin up to 15, nine of those points at the foul line. Molly Davis sticking to Purdue like Velcro.
Davis finds the seam, nice. finds Stolke, and she's got an easy two. Finding the seam, drawing multiple defenders, it had a wide open look to Stolke. Iowa up to 95 points, their season high, 113. Oh, the Hawkeyes scoring at such a high level, and it's been a team effort. Great pass by Davis. And Davis is the point guard, really. Has that IQ, and she has that ball handling ability and the playmaking ability. So to have Clark and Davis on the floor at the same time, as you hear the standing ovation. One shy for career high on the glass. Patty O'Grady in for the first time. In the first half especially, they did a great job of getting to the basket. Then Iowa was able to blow this game open because they created second chance opportunities and use our physicality. There she is. This time her foot was not out of bounds like in the first half. Look, she's gonna, you get a high five and you get a high five. It's like Oprah. Caitlin Clark, never too far from home, but this felt different tonight. This is a really cool experience to be able to come in front of your, technically your hometown crowd. Maples, the transition three. They've knocked down 10. That's as many as Iowa in this contest. Cleveland State's gonna do some damage in the horizon like this season. Of the entire sport, men's and women's, since the 2009-2010 season. I mean, this is her 48th all-time, her fifth 30-point game of the season. Just the numbers go on and on the way she can fill the stat sheet. You can hear the Iowa cheer going around in case you folks in the background were wondering what was happening. <laughs> and set in the open, Carver Hawkeye West here. Living up to its name is Purdue Thou. She mixes up how she scores. I mean, she's the player of the year contender. Leo to injury for the entire season. Last year's Horizon League player of the year. A falter. And that board chased down. And Coach Lisa Bluter told us today she feels like we are as deep as we've ever been. It's a good opportunity for solid minutes here against a good mid-major team, one that was receiving votes in the USA Today coaches poll entering this week to be able to become more cohesive. Well, they had won nine straight headed into this game. Uh, but to that point, Lisa Bluter, everybody's going to be tired. You have to have depth, and teams that have a lot of players they can go to on the bench are the teams that can make deep tournament runs. Backdoor cut to Falter, makes it happen before. No panic from a falter and when you look at this bench and the depth that they have each player brings the, her own skill set fulfills a specific role Michigan State and I don't know about you Megan that team the Spartans number oh. 12 in the net rankings excited to see what they can do in the first year under Robin Freilich Robin Freilich has done a great job at Michigan State getting that team for team this year that's played at a high level already one of the best defenses in the country See who else knew can get on the board, and this time it's Jim Fee. Bench points for Iowa in this con contest. Astrological in their dominance. The shot goes as time expires, but never in doubt.